Hey there. In this video I'm gonna go over everything you need to know about how reflecting damage works, which is particularly useful when main tanking Locestius because you can deal decent damage by standing far away from him and constantly reflecting his frost bolts. The first most important thing to know is that your own damage mitigation has absolutely no impact on the damage you reflect back. This means that armor, major and minor protection, blocking, mitigation champion points and basically any other form of damage mitigation has no impact on the amount of damage you reflect. When it comes to damage done debuffs on your enemy it's inconsistent. Minor and major maim have no impact on damage you reflect, while minor cowardice, major cowardice and weakening enchant will reduce the damage you reflect. When it comes to your offensive stats, your max stamina, max magicka, weapon damage and spell damage do not impact the reflected damage. Stats that do impact it are critical chance, critical damage and penetration. The reflected damage can also be increased by certain champion points such as deadly aim, master at arms, fighting finesse or force of nature. It can also be increased by buffs such as minor and major slayer, minor and major berserk and debuffs on the target such as minor and major vulnerability, touch of zen or inner beast. To visualize what happens, Locestis shoots out his Frostbolt and all that's calculated at this moment is his weapon slash spell damage, which can be impacted by minor cowardice, major cowardice and weakening enchant. Then the projectile flies, hits you and gets reflected. None of the stats matter at this moment. The projectile then flies back and hits Locestis. And this is where all the calculations are being done. The reflected damage will be based on your crit chance, crit damage, penetration and damage done buffs and damage taken debuffs Locestis had the moment projectile hits him. Now, how to use that information to alter your build and maximize your damage against Locestis? Let's start with Monduses. The three Monduses that can increase your reflected damage are the Thief, the Shadow and the Lover. Since a tank's crit chance is usually quite low, the Thief should provide the biggest damage increase. Now armor weights. Rather than using the regular 5 heavy 1 medium 1 light setup, you should get as many light pieces as you can because they will increase your penetration and critical chance. Medium armor would also increase your reflected damage by increasing your critical damage, but light armor increases it by much more. So this is an example of a setup with Perlesson Ward and Yolna Kryn sets. Here I can only use light armor on my monster set, so in order to be able to put on more light armor I made a swap with a damage dealer. I replaced my Yolnakrin with Martial Knowledge and they replaced their Martial Knowledge with Crusader, which just like Yolnakrin applies Minor Courage. This allowed me to make this setup with 5 light armor pieces. I still need 2 heavy pieces because Perlesson has to be double barred to work. I hope this explains the idea behind setting up your armor weights because it doesn't always have to be Perlesson and Yolna or Perlesson and MK. You should always wear whatever your raid lead tells you to. And for example with a combination of Yolna and MK you could get away with 7 light armor pieces because Yolna can't be one barred. The best armor trait for increasing your reflect damage is Divines. In the setup I've shown I'm using Reinforce on my heavy pieces because I don't want to completely gut my survivability, though I might change it to Divines later on. I usually say that you shouldn't count Puncturing Remedies bonus armor when making a build because you shouldn't be using Pierce armor every 5 seconds. But in that specific fight you can actually do that because you don't care about your armor when Locestis is down because you'll reflect everything anyway. And when Locestis is flying you're tanking Atronax and the laser so you can afford to cast Pierce Armor every 5 seconds because there's not much else to do. Armor enchants don't matter when it comes to reflected damage. In the screenshot I'm using Magicka enchants to boost my other sources of damage. When it comes to jewelry, none of the traits and none of the enchants will impact your reflect damage. In the setup I've shown I'm using combination of bloodthirsty and infused traits combined with weapon damage and magical cost reduction enchants, but that's just to boost my other sources of damage. If you'd only care about the reflect damage then using infused with either tri cost reduction or magical cost reduction enchants will be best. Theoretically the best race for reflecting damage would be Khajiit, thanks to their bonus critical damage. Another race that can boost reflected damage are wood elves thanks to their bonus penetration. In the setup I've shown I'm using Nord because I need the bonus ultigen to get barrier every time laser phase happens and I need the armor in other places in Sunspire. You've already seen the skills in my setup and now I wanna talk about the reasoning behind them. I'm only gonna talk about skills that are there just for increasing their flag damage. I'm not gonna talk about the reasoning behind staple warden skills such as Winter's Revenge or Fetch and Infection. I chose Inner Beast instead of Destructive Clench as my taunt because Inner Beast's 10% damage bonus will apply to the reflected damage. Camouflage Hunter is there to passively grant me major savagery and prophecy increasing my crit chance by a decent amount. Bird of Prey provides constant minor berserk which affects reflected damage and additional 4% crit damage thanks to the advanced species passive. Wild Guardian's only purpose is providing that 4% crit damage from advanced species. 
Another cool interaction to mention is that the reflected damage can apply status effects. So Locastis' reflected frost bolts can apply minor brittle if you're wielding ice stuff at the moment the reflected projectile hits Locastis back. Before you apply any of these advices to your setup, you need to ask yourself how much you specifically can get away with. Some of the changes, like the Thief Mundus or Light Armor, will greatly reduce your survivability and make the encounter much harder, and only you can judge how much you can handle. Other stuff, like for example the Inner Beast skill, shouldn't really make much difference in difficulty. That's all for this video. Thanks for watching and see you next time.